Well, hey gang, I think it's about time that I finally and formally introduce you to Squats. Squats is a 2008 BMW E70 X5 with the three liter turbo diesel. And I got Squats at auction last quarter last year, October, November, something like that. It's called Squats because he's got bad rear airbags and every time we wake up in the morning, he's dragging his ass along the ground but luckily the compressor still works and so he pumps himself back up fairly quickly. So we got squats fairly cheaply at an online sight unseen auction. Unfortunately, we're actually pretty disappointed in what we got, even though we did get it cheap. What we did know about the car was that it was a uh, repairable write-off back in 2016 or in American money, that means it was a salvage title repaired and re-inspected. That's fine, I wasn't afraid of that. Um, we counted that when we decided what we were willing to pay for it. Unfortunately, when we picked it up, there was a whole bunch more going on with this guy. So the car was pretty grossly misrepresented in the listing. Uh, the listing implied that everything was hunky-dory except for a few bumps and scratches and uh, that repairable write-off history. But uh, when we got into it and started driving it, there was a heck of a lot more going on. Uh, we had check engine lights, we've got DPF issues, all of these things I think had been hidden by either clearing the codes or even resetting the computer by an extended battery disconnect, but uh, it all looked good when we drove it off the lot and not long later we had all these codes and issues start coming up, so I was super disappointed. However, none of this is Squats' fault, I don't blame him, I do blame whoever listed him, it could have been the auction house themselves or it could have been the private party that had it listed at auction, had not disclosed a whole bunch of things to the auction house. So I did complain, didn't hear anything back, but luckily we did get him fairly cheap. And so we just moved on with our life. And I've been driving squats now for three or four months on and off. And uh, he's actually proven to be pretty reliable, pretty good condition. Um, he's taken the place of Sandpit as the beach car for now uh, But I haven't introduced you until this point because we really didn't know what we were going to do with squats uh, But what we've decided to do um, Is work towards turning him into an overlander and so that bad suspension in the back It's a pretty simple job to replace like for like with the airbags and it's only about 200 bucks in parts but we might actually look at eventually putting lifted coils in the back. We'll put some uh, all-terrain tires on it. And uh, also with that DPF issue, we'll um, delete the DPF and put in a straight pipe through there and coat it out. And that'll give us a bit more of performance, a bit more of an aggressive vehicle. And it'll all kind of tie together and solve all the problems with this car and hopefully bring it back to something of a coherent package with less issues. Having said that, of course, now that I've decided to keep it, I have put it up for sale. And if someone wants to give me my money back, then, uh, you know, I wouldn't be adverse to giving the project to someone else who is ready to love him as well. Um, but we'll just keep plugging away at it. I do know this one will take a long time because it is running and driving and reliable. So I'll probably just run and drive and rely on it for a while. And every now and then we'll throw a little bit of money at it or a little bit of time. Um, and try and slowly build that project, or it'll sell when it sells. There were also a bunch of other annoying things about the car. Um, it was given a clean roadworthy, but a whole bunch of lights don't work. In fact, the uh, t left tail light is completely busted up electronics wise. The lens is good, but it's not salvageable in any easy way with the electronics. And so we could either rewire everything or just order some replacement stuff there but that's annoying because you're promised a car that's roadworthy and it really isn't so another misrepresentation the other thing is this car has a ridiculous amount of cd slots we've got one there one there we've got six in there and we've got one for the dvd player back there and none of them work we've also got steering wheel buttons that don't work heat doesn't work the backup camera doesn't work, all of these things. None of this was disclosed in the auction listing. In fact, it even showed and claimed the backup camera 
as a feature. It didn't mention the discs and the DVD and all that kind of thing. So you know what, I'm not too upset about that. Again, a risk of going to auction. Uh, and it was covered in mould, as I said, but I haven't detailed it yet, but I have given it a bit of a clean. Uh, the worst thing was for sort of comfort wise and just day to day driving was the carpets were soaking wet and we had major water leaks into the cabin of the car. So the first thing we decided to do was just drive squats for a while and see what we ended up with. And uh, as I say, he turned out to be fairly reliable. We do have a check engine light, but it is just an emissions thing. Um, we do have the DPF issue, but that's uh, not gonna kill us. It's just annoying. There's some noises coming from, it's either the DPF or the air intake and turbos and stuff, but again, bearable. But the most unbearable thing about squats was the leaks. Carpets were always soaking wet, stinks like poop, uh, mold everywhere. It doesn't matter if you cleaned it or not, the mold would uh, come back the kids wouldn't get in the car because she was all smelly. And uh, so that's what we had to take care of first. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm uh, filming this a little out of order. I've actually already cleaned out the sunroof drains and everything like that. And it looks like it might be working. Uh, we definitely fixed a problem. Whether it's the only problem or not, we'll find out. But the carpets are drying out now. The car has stopped smelling and the mold seems to have gone away, which is great. And uh, this is how we got there. All right, gang, here we are with the Project E70. And uh, it has been raining for about three weeks straight here. Lots of flooding all around our neighborhood. And unfortunately, I have inherited a swimming pool. And now, a bunch of mold as well. This car's been parked. I put a cover over it. I knew it had a sunroof leak. But the cover didn't stop it. So I finally got another car project car out of the garage that's now waterproof we're going to get this one into the garage and dry it out so it was so bad previously before i put the cover on that when i opened the passenger door it flooded out so it was all the way up over the lip right there so this is actually not too bad believe it or not but we're going to dry this up as much as we can and then uh, we'll sit it in the garage for a couple of days with the windows open and then I'll show you how to clear the sunroof drains but yeah this is the project this is how I got it uh, it's time to start fixing it because this ain't good well there we are she made it into the garage if she's looking a little lopsided that's because she is so most of the water was in the front passenger or well, that's the front left and this part of the world we are well down in here but also the back passenger side is wet too but the driver's sides are both dry so I don't want the water to work its way back onto the dry side and I'd love the water to slowly trickle down so over the next few days whilst it's draining and drying the water can accumulate down here and we'll keep soaking it up I know ideally would be pull the seats and pull the carpets but that's just not something I have time for right now so we're going to use gravity and hopefully one day a sunny day but for now this is what we're going to do and we'll try and dry it out well it's a few days later and finally the car is starting to dry out we've had a run of some dry warm days and so the carpet is dry we can finally get in here and clean up all of this mold so that is mold in there it was all over the seats as well but we've had to keep using the car so i wiped them down um didn't get a photo of those but it was pretty gross so time to clean up well here we go i've just opened the third row seats and you can see on the headrests there just how bad the le leather was getting it was like that throughout the car so i'll give these a quick clean as well also, all the seat belts look like this all the way through. The back ones must have stayed dry because they were fine. But the front ones even had like tiny little mushrooms growing all over them. They were their own entire ecosystem. So the seats are clean again. Hopefully they stay that way. Time to head up top and see if we can clean out these sunroof drains. 
All right, so here we are on top with the sunroof open. Just looking at here, you want to put your water in the outer track here. This inner one is not part of the drainage system, so make sure the water goes in the outer one. And you can see just there is the little drain hole. So let's see what happens. This side, I hope, will be okay. So fill that up. Yep, and I can already hear it coming out the bottom. But that should drain away relatively quickly. And it did. So that's good, that one's working. But it's the other side that's causing the problems, I believe. So let's go check that side out. So here we are on the other side. There's our drain hole right there. Let's pour some water in. All right, bubbling's not a good sign. Means the water's not flowing. And there we go, that's not going down at all. So let's start feeding our line. All right, team, this was a two-handed job and it took a little bit of finagling and I had a trial and error, but I got it clear. So I'm gonna show you what I did, what worked and what didn't. All right, so the first thing I tried was my thick trimmer line. Uh, it didn't go in very far to start with, but what I found helped was I rounded off the end of the line because there's a bunch of corners right in the beginning of the tubes and it couldn't get around those corners with sharp edges. So I rounded that off and I got in probably, I don't know, maybe three feet. I got almost all the way down the A pillar if you measured it out from the hole, but it didn't clear it and it got to a point where I couldn't get the water to drain. It wasn't making a difference. So what I ended up putting together, which worked, was this syringe and some hose that's exactly the right thickness. Put the hose all the way down in there and then just back flushed as much as I could, up and down, up and down, up and down, with as much pressure as I could generate. And then suddenly it all gave way. I heard the water rush out behind the front wheel and now no more water. Here we go, just to prove a point. Pouring the water in. Lots of water. I can already hear it running out the bottom. There you go. Nice and clear. All right, so as suspected, the driver's side or right-hand side in this country was working okay. The passenger side had some issues, but after a bit of trial and error, we managed to clear them. Let's move on to the back side now. So here is the left side back drain. And there is the right one. They have a little flap on them. You can see that one's loose. But this one looks like it could even be gummed shut. So just very carefully, we're gonna pop that open. So apparently these things are really easy to pop off and then they're a pain in the butt to put back on. So just a little trick, you get a very fine screwdriver or something. If you push down on the rubber at the bottom, you can slide it in and lift it up just like that without putting any pressure on it. So I didn't catch it, but as I put this line in, a whole bunch of water came flowing out. As you can see, came down enough to come all the way down here. So that kind of suggests I might have unplugged something. So I'm gonna keep sending this through until we see it up in the cabin. So there we go. We can see our line coming through on the right-hand side just there. So we're gonna jiggle it backwards and forwards, and then we're gonna run as much water as we can through it 
and try and flush it out. We'll keep jiggling at the same time, see if we can clear some of that muck out. Give you an idea of what I'm doing to flush it. Pouring a chunk of water in here, just like that. And quickly running to the back, and whilst it's running out, just jiggling this backwards and forwards. Try and get as much of that gunk out of the way as possible. Sorry, focus isn't great, but you get the idea. Okay, so this side was already running clearly. Show you, haven't done anything to this one yet. Just pour water in. And out it comes. But we'll give it a quick poke as well. So I've given the line a good jiggle, really clear it out as much as they can. So again, pouring the water in, just to prove the point. Lots of water. Here it comes. It pouring out. So we are good to go on the back. Yeah, so the trimmer line, it worked really, really well. Uh, uh, there, in that little thing right there. Straight shot from the drain up to the sunroof. So the trimmer line was perfect for that. In the front though, the trimmer line couldn't get round all of the bends and twists in the drain line and so that syringe set up with a little bit of tube that creates a bit of a seal against the drain line pump that backwards and forwards just like you would a plunger well there we go team we uh we won that battle and there was definitely a problem with those sunroof drains and we have definitely fixed it don't know if that was our only water problem but hopefully uh it was if not then it'll be the vapor barriers that need fixing as well but uh, it's been about a week since we did that. We have had a lot of rain and uh, the carpets are not swimming, which is a good sign. They are still damp, but they were still damp because of how much water got in it before. So fingers crossed, that's that battle won. And uh, for now, we'll just keep driving squats and uh, we'll see how he goes. And slowly but surely, we'll do bits and pieces to him over the coming months, uh, unless someone wants to buy him. So. You never know, that's always a possibility. There's always something else that we'd like to buy. And so if we free up the cash because we find him a good home, then that's a good result too. But uh, thanks for playing along, for watching and for welcoming squats into the fleet. Uh, I'll be driving him as my daily for now. Uh, he's the beach car. He's the one that can get messy and uh, we'll see what happens next. So thanks a lot. Catch you next time.